Many people have drawn the parallels between the, the Greek effort to move to the east under Alexander the Great, followed by uh, then the Roman Empire. And uh, as it was the Greco-Roman Empire, and later the, the Romans brought the Greek philosophers to teach their children, it seems that the Anglo-American Empire has brought the Englishmen to teach the American children. So the brawn and the might came from Rome, and the brawn and the might of the Anglo-American Empire comes from America, but the original thought came from Greece, and the original thought in the Anglo-American Empire came from London. Let's call it London. Could we, be. We, you could uh, say uh, that. And, 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 and if we also watch the, the effort by the English to establish control in South China through the opium dens and to obtain tea and then to create the tea in India and then America following much, much later with Henry Kissinger's so-called opening to China. It, it looks like these big, uh, I don't know what you would call it, we, we, we talked about, th these are bigger than eras, but these waves of history waves. are repeating waves again of now. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Massive waves of history. Not a small, uh, not, uh, not a single uh, uh, ripple, but a wave of history. And it seems that perhaps this, uh, this new Silk Road, and the key word there is new, is the one that could be made permanent, especially on the land. Because the speed of transit on the land by high-speed bullet trains allows a much faster and more stable and bigger cargo connection between China and Europe and potentially Africa than the sea power, the English and the Americans, could ever match because you cannot move as fast on the sea as you can move on the land. And the cost of air travel is still too high to move cargo. So does the arrival of the new Silk Road by land to Europe mean that China has a, and here we can talk about not necessarily physical chemistry, but just physical structures. Does the physical structure of the new Silk Road on the land between China and Europe doom the Anglo-American empire because of the simple fact that they cannot operate as quickly on the water or as cheaply in the air. Is that what's happening it not, here? It is not necessary that um, the um, sea-based empire is doomed. It is that uh, they realize, they are realizing that they cannot dominate the whole world. You see, empires are mainly military structures, but keeping control of a structure by military means is extremely expensive. It usually doesn't work for a long time. It is just not efficient. A commercial empire, an empire based on trade, on political agreement, it can, can last for a long time. If you have to keep it together by force of arms, then it will not last. There is no way. You see, there are so many parallels between the story of the Roman Empire and the current situation. That's, it's, it's like seeing the same movie twice. It's fantastic because the Roman Empire was sea-based transportation lanes on the Mediterranean Sea by ships and military control. And they could, could not survive for a long time. Now transfer this to our current situation. The Americans are controlling the oceans. They have uh, <coughs> I think 11 carrier strike groups. Um, aircraft carrier, one group has a big aircraft carrier, all sorts of uh, um, auxiliary ships. It's gigantic. They need 11, 11 of these. So can you believe how much this costs? And it is completely useless because these carrier strike groups don't have the projecting power to attack the Silk Road or China, continental China. It's, uh, 
It's a, an incredible waste of money, which is typical of empires. Empires ruin themselves by excessive military expenses. And so this uh, deep time is moving, keeps moving, keeps moving, and uh, we are going through a series of transformation which will see evidently the disappearance of the Anglo-American empire simply because it is too expensive to maintain. It's a huge, such, such a huge cost. And you can see so the... It, the Amer yes. In effect, when the deep state meets the deep time, the deep time wins. Okay, exactly. You had it right. Very good. Very good. It's deep time. They're starting, the Americans are starting to think about that. I don't think they will really understand it, but they're at least asking the question. Okay, we have such this huge fleet, military fleet, which, is, which has been put out of service by a tiny little virus. Okay, and you start and, to realize and not it, just look, put, not just not just put out of service by the virus, but the entire command that. structure. Yes, but but the the manner in which the command structure of the empire responded by firing the captain uh, of the carrier. The story, yes. We brought, uh, we saw the the fall of a very f a very mm, beloved captain to the anger of his crew, bringing down the deputy secretary of the navy of the empire, which which reminds very much of the way in which emperors were brought down at the end of the Roman Empire by a conquering general who returned from Gaul and marched on Rome. I wouldn't and be surprised moves. to see that captain running uh, for election in America, just as we saw the, the attempt to draft MacArthur. Absolutely, we are, seeing, we are seeing again the same movie. Right now we are seeing uh, the empire, the, Ro the American empire, just like the Roman empire, concentrate the power into a single man. It is typical because the economical, the financial situation is getting so tight that you cannot afford squabbles, you cannot afford um, different viewpoints. You tend to concentrate all the power into a single commander in such a way to maximize the military power of the system in such a way that it can be concentrated when the commander-in-chief decides that um, something to go attack that place or defend that place it is done normally for a certain period but that doesn't change the fact that military power is expensive normally you can afford it only in some rather specific specific moments of history america built the empire it built on the basis of his commercial and financial power that he got from oil, crude oil. For many years, America was the largest world producer of oil, and that's how they won the Second World War, because uh, um, Europe could not possibly remotely match the power of the United States in terms of production of military hardware. And that, if you have money, you can build yourself, you can buy yourself an empire. But then your resources will be always limited. And when you start running out of resources like oil, oil Americans are, you see how emphasized is the, the American story, how much it is based on oil. When Mr. Trump says, make America great again, what does he mean? How do you make America great again? And then he sp speaks about America energy independence. So why do you want American energy independence? It is because the whole system is based on the capability of America to finance the, the military system with the, with the oil it produces. So this, what we're seeing now is the last gasp of a dying empire because the empire still can survive they they have this technology they started um, extracting oil from from these uh, 
uh, shale oil, these tight oil wells, which allowed the system to survive for a while because they can keep production going, even increasing, and that gives them the resources to keep the empire going for a while.